All right, moving on to chapter one, section two. Parent functions and transformations. All right, sounds exciting, doesn't it? I'm so excited for this. Here we go. Okay, functions that belong to the same family share key characteristics. The parent function is the most basic function of a family, in a family. So we have a bunch of different types of graphs, and we got parent functions for each of those graphs. Functions in the same family are transformations of their parent functions. Okay? So, down here, it shows a few different types of parent functions. Okay? It tells you, I would have this chart written down, or at least, if you can't see it, write it down from your textbook, or write it down from the notes later on. I'd have this written down, this little chart. Tells you what the family name is. Tells you what the rule is, the actual function of the parent function. Shows you what the graph looks like of the parent function. And then it shows you the domain and range of the parent function. So, the first family of graphs is the constant family. Constant families, the, or the parent graph of a constant family is f of x equals 1. 1 is just a constant. That's my most basic form of my constant families. Okay? The graph is just a horizontal line going through 1 on the y-axis. Our domain, what is my domain just in general? Zero. No? Does anyone remember what domain stands for? Yeah. Uh, like top. My domain is my set of x values. So what does that make my range? My set of y values. So the set of x values that this constant family covers, this parent function of this constant family, is all real numbers. Because it's going forever to the left and forever to the right, correct? Those arrows yeah. means it goes on forever and ever? Infinity. Very good. Negative infinity to positive infinity. That would be my, that how it would be in my interval notation. Right. Negative infinity positive infinity. So it's all real numbers. My range is my y value, so I'm looking vertically. Do I have a stopping point going up? Yep. Yeah, it's 1. Do I have a stopping point going down? Yep. Yeah, it's 1. What's my only y value? 1. 1. So my range is y equals 1 yep. for that constant family. Okay? But your axis is infinity. The next family I'm going to look at is our linear family. Linear function family. The parent function for the linear family is y equals x, or f of x equals x. That's the most basic function within that family. All other graphs that are linear are transformations of this graph. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? No. So this is the most basic form of the linear functions. y equals x, f of x equals x. If I have any other line that's graphed on a graph, that's not y equals x. That's a transformation of this type of function. Transformation just... <coughs> we'll actually see the definition of transformation here in a second, so I'm not going to say it for you. The domain of my linear parent function is all real numbers because it's going forever to the left, forever to the right. The range is also all real numbers because it's going forever up and forever down. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. The next one we're going to look at is our absolute value. You guys have seen the absolute value bars before, right? Yep. So this is f of x equals the absolute value of x. That's my parent function of my absolute value function. It is a v right here. Anytime you see a v as a graph, that is an absolute value function. Okay? The domain's all real numbers because it's forever going to the left, forever going to the right. My range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Does it go lower than zero? Does this graph ever go lower than zero? No. no. It's stopping right at zero. Does it have a stopping point going up? No. No. So that's why it's y is greater than or equal to zero. It covers all y values that are bigger than and equal to zero. And the last family graph, the parent function we're going to talk about, is quadratics. 
f of x equals x squared is my parent function for my quadratics. This is called a parabola. Anytime you see any form of parabola, the parent functions are going to be quadratics. Or it's going to be in the quadratic family. Okay? See any other type of these graphs, that's what we'd call a transformation of these parent functions. Okay? Any questions, comments, concerns so far? Can I move on? Or are we still writing? Like I said, this chart is straight out of the textbook. So you can always go look at the textbook or go watch these notes later on as well. Example one, identifying a function family. It says identify the function family to which f belongs. Compare the graph of f to the graph of its parent function. So what kind of shape is that graph? It's a V-shape. Do you guys remember what um, family of functions the V-shape belongs to? Absolute value. Absolute value. So identify the function family to which f belongs. I would say f belongs to the absolute value <laughs> function family. Does everyone see that? What would the function family be if it was a straight line? Positive Y. If it was just a straight line. Linear. Linear. Mm. If it was a U shape, what would we call it? Quadratic. Quadratic. I want you to use these words when you're describing what family they belong to. Constant. Linear, absolute value, quadratic. Okay? Does that make sense? Now it says compare the graph of f to the graph of its parent function. So let me just go ahead and graph the parent function on here. Here is my parent function. Oops. That's my parent function. Got that straight from over here. Okay? So let's compare it to the parent function. How is it different than my parent function? Um, well, it's on the Say that again. Oh, well, so does this one. Oh, you're saying this one starts on the x-axis. I see what you're saying. So, what would you say about this one compared to this one not being on the x-axis? It's higher up, so it's shifted up maybe. So you could say that. F is shifted. Can you see how many units it's shifted up? Two. Well, one. One. F is shifted up. One unit. Do you notice anything else about how it's similar or different? It's more straight. More like so what would you say about that? Would you say it's wider than our parent function? It's more. It's narrower. Yeah. Narrower. Does everyone see how it's narrower? It's a little more closed in than our parent function. And it is narrower. Those are the only differences I see. Um, what is the equation of our parent function, of our absolute value parent function? F of x equals bracket x bracket, or whatever. F of x equals the absolute value of x, right? Here's this function, f of x equals the absolute value of 2x plus 1. So these numbers inside this function are what's manipulating it and changing it from our parent function. It's transforming it is what we would say. Okay? Does that make sense? Are there any questions on example one here? We okay with that? Questions on example one? Okay, describing transformations. Here's the definition of a transformation. A transformation changes the size, shape, 
position or orientation of a graph. So like, I, like we said before, all of the graphs are transformations of our parent functions. The transformations change the size, shape, position, or orientation of our graph. A translation is a transformation that shifts a graph horizontally and or vertically, but does not change its size, shape, or orientation. Okay? I would know those definitions if I were you. So if you need to write them down, write them down. Like I said, I would know these definitions. I would know what they mean. Once again, a transformation changes the size, shape, position, or orientation of a graph. Would it help if I turned all lights off? Yes. Make sure we're not falling asleep. Transformation changes the size, shape, position, or orientation of a graph. A translation is a transformation that shifts a graph horizontally and or vertically, but does not change its size, shape, or orientation. It is possible to have a translation and a transformation all going on at the same time. We okay with understanding what a transformation and translation mean? Can I move on or are we still writing? We good? Okay, example two. Graph g of x equals x minus 4 and its parent function. Then describe the transformation. I already put the graphs up here for us. Do we remember how to graph linear functions? How do we graph them? Straight line. Well, yeah, how do we graph them, though? Let's say I gave you g of x equals x minus 4, and I didn't give you the graph. How would you graph it? Wouldn't you put, like, the dot on 4 and then, like, a line? Why did you put a dot on negative 4? Because you'd say positive 4. Or plus, plus 4. g of x equals x minus 4? Oh, never mind. Then, yeah, it would be on negative what form of an equation is that in? Back to Algebra 1 terms here. Slope, intercept, form. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Y equals mx plus b. Right? M represents my slope. So the number times x is my slope. The b, the constant, is my y-intercept. Right? So g of x equals x minus 4 is in slope-intercept form. What's my y-intercept? Zero. Negative 4. But, so we put a point at negative 4 on the y-axis. And what's my slope? The number times x. 1. Rise over run, right? 1 over 1. Yep. It's a positive 1 over a positive 1. I go up 1, right 1 to get to my next point. Yep. So up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. I can go down 1, left 1. Down one left one, down one left one. Does everyone see how they got this blue line yes. from g of x equals x minus 4? Yes. Okay. G of x also equals y, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We treat g of x like y. It's just function notation. And then it says graph g of x equals x minus 4 and its parent function. What's the parent function? f of x equals... f of x equals x. I can't see it. It's my parent function, right? My parent function of a linear function is f of x equals x. Is so this is the graph of our parent function right here. This is still slope-intercept form. What's my y-intercept? Zero, because there's nothing being added to it, correct? So the y-intercept is zero. What's my slope of my parent function? What's the number times x over here? One. It's also one. So rise, run one, or rise one, run one. One over one. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. So on and so forth. Down one, left one. 
Is everyone okay how we got this black line, this parent function? Everyone okay graphing linear functions? Okay. So I graphed the function it wanted me to graph and its parent function. Now it wants me to describe the transformation. So what's my transformation here that occurred? Um, it's moved down four, right? Did the size, shape, position, or orientation of the graph change? Yeah. Just the position of it, right? Yeah. So this is specifically a translation, right? Because yes. it didn't change anything else, did it? It didn't change the size, the shape, or the orientation. So this is a translation because it's a transformation that shifts a graph horizontally and or vertically, but does not change its shape size, shape, or orientation. So is this a vertical or horizontal translation? Horizontal. Vertical, because it moved it down four. Uh, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Moved it down four. Is everyone okay with that? So, I would say this is a vertical translation Shifted down how many units? How many units did it shift down? Four. Four units from the parent function. Is everyone okay with that? Describing the transformation. We okay. Everyone understand how it's a vertical translation? I said vertical translated. It's vertical translation. Shifted down four units from the parent function. Okay? Questions on example two? Can I move on? Okay. Another type of transformation is a reflection. A reflection is a transformation that flips a graph over a line called the line of reflection. A reflected point is the same distance from the line of reflection as the original point, but on the opposite side of the line. Yeah. Everyone understand the idea of a reflection. It's being reflected over a line, a line of reflection. Okay? Does everyone understand the idea of a reflection, the concept of a reflection? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a graph that gets reflected over a line called a line of reflection. Just like a mirror, right? I would know this definition as well. Can I move on or is anyone writing this down? Okay, I'm waiting a second. Moving on, <laughs> graph p of x equals negative x squared and its parent function. Then describe the transformation. I kind of already threw the graphs up here to kind of save us some time going through the notes. But to get the graphs, we, create, we, can, can, create, ah, we can create a table of values. I can't talk. So, shh. my parent function is y equals x squared, correct? No. Of a quadratic? Yeah. I know this is a quadratic because it's got a squared term in it. Right. This is y, or p of x equals negative x squared. Okay. So I'm going to plug the same values in to each one of them. I pick some x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, to plug into my function. When I plug them in, I'm just squaring these values because that's all x squared is telling me to do, correct? Mm -hmm. So I plug in negative 2. What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2. 4. 4. That's why we get negative 2 comma 4. Does everyone see that? And we plug negative 1 in. What's negative 1 squared? Negative 1 times negative 1? One. 1. 
So our next order pair is negative 1, 1. Plug 0 in. What's 0 squared? 0. 0, so I get 0, comma 0. Plug 1 in. What's 1 squared? 4. 1, comma 1. Plug 2 in. What's 2 squared? 4. 2, comma 4. Does everyone see how we got our ordered pairs? Uh -huh. yeah. We pick x values to plug in, plug them in, and that gives us our y values. Okay. That's negative 2, comma 4. Negative 2, 4. There's the ordered pair. Negative 1, 1. It's right there. Left one, up one. 0, 0. That's my origin. 1, 1. Right one, up one. 2, 4. Right two, up four. And I connect it with my parabola. I know it's a parabola. Because it's a squared term, correct? Question. If we go back here to our quadratic, I know it's a parabola. Do what? What is a parabola? What does that mean? It's the U shape. It's just, okay. this is the name of, of this graph. It's okay. a parabola. Okay? Now I know it's a parabola because it's squared. Okay? So, same thing. I'm plugging values into my function that it wants me to graph. Negative x squared. Okay? So I'm going to plug the same values in. So plug negative 2 in here. What's negative 2 squared? 4. 4. four. It's got the negative in front of it, so it's negative 4. It just changes the sign. Okay? So negative 2, negative 4 is my next ordered pair. Plug negative 1 in. What's negative 1 squared? Negative 1. 1. I squared. 1. And then it's got this negative in front of it, so it becomes negative 1. 0 squared. 0. zero. I don't have a negative 0, so it's just 0, 0. Uh, plugging 1 in, what's 1 squared? 1. 1. With the negative in front of it, becomes a negative 1. 2 squared? 2. 4. 4. Negative in front of it becomes negative 4. So I get negative 2, comma, negative 4. That'd be down here. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0. 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4. Does everyone understand how we graph this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can just make a table of values, pick x values to plug in, get y values out of it. It gives you ordered pairs to graph, and then you connect them with a parabola for a quadratic. So I've graphed p of x equals negative x squared. That's this one right here. And I've graphed its parent function. That's this one right here. Now it wants me to describe the transformation. What's my transformation that occurred here? Reflection. A reflection. Over the x-axis. It's being reflected over an x-axis, right? So we could say my x-axis is the line of reflection in this, this case. Does everyone see how it's being reflected over the x-axis? Yeah. Yeah. So my parent function, 2p of x, being reflected over my x-axis. Okay? On this slide, it says a reflected point is the same distance from the line of reflection as the original point, but on the opposite side of the line. So, I have a point here, correct? Yes. Yeah. I have a point here. What did we say our line of reflection was? X-axis. The x-axis. Yes. Yeah. Right? So how far is this point from the x-axis? One, two, three, four. Right? Yes. Yeah. So its reflected point should be also four units from the x-axis. So that would be one, two, three, four. Does everyone see that? All these points up here are the same distance from our line of reflection as these points down here. Okay? It's symmetrical. So my description here would be the graph of P is the graph of the parent function then flipped over the x-axis, reflected over the x-axis. So P of X equals negative X squared is a reflection in the X axis of the parent quadratic function. And that'd be my, me describing the transformation. Are there any questions about that? No. So what are the two types of transformations we've talked about today? Horizontal. Reflection. Translation. And translation. translation. What is a trans, someone raise your hand and explain to me what a translation is. Gosh, approach. It's, it shifts graphs horizontally and or vertically, but does not change the size, shape, position, or orientation. Very good. A translation just picks my graph up and either moves it vertically 
Or moves it horizontal, right? Or, ver or diagonally. Nope. That would be moving vertically and horizontally at the same time. So, uh, And then reflection. What is a reflection? Someone raise your hand and tell me. Very good. So it's my parent function being reflected over a line of reflection. Okay? Any questions about those two types of transformations? Those are the only two we're going to talk about today. Okay. Here's our assignment. Page 14, numbers 3 through 18 all. This will be due Wednesday. Wednesday. That'll be the 8th. On canvas. The wind day. Okay. Get this written down. Are there any questions about my notes before I end the recording? No. But I had trouble on